What? No twist tops when you really want a soda? What are you gonna do? Well, let's take this cash out. Oh yeah. I bet you wish your wallet did that. Before we go much further, if you're new here, my name is Jeff and this is Jeff Reviews For You. I review a whole lot of products. I specialize in reviewing as seen on TV items. Every once in a while, I do a little bit of a DIY just because I like to. If that aligns with something that you're looking for on the internet, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and click the bell below. That way you're notified every time I release a video just like this one. One more thing, don't forget to check down the description for my social media, Instagram and Twitter. I would love it if you would follow me there too. Now, let's get right to reviewing the Quick Light TAC Tracker. It's their newest TAC wallet to see if it's any good. I wanna get a quick weight of the TAC Tracker just to see what we're looking at. So you see right here, it's 3.5 ounces. Of course, that's 98 grams. Let's compare that to some other popular minimalist wallets. The Ridge wallet is 3.4 ounces and 97 grams. The Rossum is right there at two ounces even and 58 grams. The lightest one of the bunch, of course, is the Pulse X1 by Gear Infusion. If we look at the grams on this one, we're right at 46 grams. So the TAC Tracker is definitely the heaviest out of them, not too far away from our Ridge Wallet. Now, mind you, this is the Damascus Steel, so that is one of their heavier ones, but it's not that heavy of a wallet. Let's get a measurement to see how big it is. It's about four inches long. If you go down to this compression pin part, which is definitely longer than the other minimalist wallets, and it's just over two and a half inches wide. Just for reference, a typical minimalist wall like this is about three and three eighths inches long and about two inches wide. This thing is totally the Swiss army knife of wallets. Let me show you all the cool different things that this wallet can do other than hold cash and cards. Of course, the most obvious is this has a Bluetooth tracker, which is awesome. But if you know anything about Bluetooth, it works about 30 feet away from your phone. So that's about your range, 30 feet in total. To turn this in the on mode for your Bluetooth track, you're actually gonna hold down this Wi-Fi looking button. Let's hold it down for a couple seconds. You get two beeps. Now to turn that off, you hold it down now for five seconds. and you get one beep, so now the tracking part is off. See down here, I actually have a carabiner hook. That's pretty cool. You could hook it up to your carabiner. If I look right down here onto this, this is actually a window breaker. That's pretty convenient. On this side, I have a screwdriver, like a flathead screwdriver, and of course here you saw the pop bottle opener or the bottle opener here on the top. There's actually a flashlight built right into this wallet. So let's just hit this Q one time. And there you have it light up pretty sweet. Now, if I were to hold this down, it's going to flash. So wait for that in just a second. I'm going to hold it down. And it does that pulsating light. Now to turn this off, I'm just going to click the button again. Now that I showed you the features, let me show you the wallet part. All right. So there's this little clip here that just folds around. And so you pull that up and over, and this is how you access your cards. Down here is a money clip um, section, and what I've noticed is this is a really tight money clip, so it's actually hard to get cash in there. The directions actually tell us that you can carry up to 10 cards in this wallet, and yes, I have carried 10 cards. It felt to me almost like it was a little full, especially if some of your cards have those raised or embossed letters. For this video, I'm just gonna be using about eight cards because that's my typical carry. You don't wanna hold as many as eight. You can actually cinch this down tighter so then you can fit fewer cards in there. Let's put a couple cards in there. I do wanna test the RFID blocking feature and then we'll throw some cash in. Here are all eight cards slipping on in. What I have noticed when I've been using this is if I take all the cards out and I go to push them back in, I actually get stopped. And that's because the cards sometimes push through. And as you can see, they're coming through here and getting stopped on the metal part. So I do have to find myself pushing it back and making sure I get it underneath there and then I can slip it in pretty easy. Just make sure you are aware of that. Cool thing here, cinches it all back together, nice and protected. 
I do like this window here on the top where I can see the card. So if I open this up and I want that card specifically, I can pull it right out. And when I'm done, slide it right back in. Now, if I didn't want that card, I can actually cycle through until I find the one that I want and slide it out just like that. And I can put it right back in as well. That is pretty convenient. Now we're going to test the RFID blocking feature. Now what I'm going to be using is an app that tests NFC. And although NFC and RFID are different letters, they operate on the same radio frequency. So the theory is if it can block NFC, it can also block RFID. You see how it says NFC tag detected. Let's put this in the wallet. I have just one card in the wallet. Let's swipe it across the front. Nothing. Now let's go over the back and it definitely blocked that one card. I do want to test to see if it can block more than one card. So let's add the rest of our cards to the wallet. I'm actually just going to put seven in because that's all the hotel cards I have, but these are all hotel cards and they all have their own NFC code. Now for the moment of truth. Are you ready? Through the front, pass the test, flip it over. Oh, it does block it. Very impressive. I do like having the money clip. So here I have is eight bills and I'm gonna slide it right under. I do notice that this clip is very tight and it's hard sometimes to get in there. I bet that will maybe loosen up over time, but it is a pretty tight clip. So if you don't fold it over more than once, this is what it's gonna look like. I like the placement. Maybe I wish it was up a little further so I could Keep it just like this because if I'm looking on this side, I don't really see the bills hanging over. That's pretty convenient. I did notice, however, I could not use the bottle opener with the cash in there. So I actually have to take that out in order to use the bottle opener feature. Although not my recommendation, if you take your bills and fold them over one time, you can slide it in just like this to give you more of a compact look, except I found that I've ripped bills at times. So you gotta be really, really careful. I don't mind folding over just the way I had it prior, but you can do it this way as well. As the phone charges, you will see that it has a red light. You know when the wallet is done charging, when the red light starts pulsating. We are gonna make our best attempt here to pair the wallet to the app. So this is on. So what I'm supposed to be able to do is hit this plus up here at the top. And then my thought is a phone should appear here. Let's see what happens. Oh, the plus came back. I am gonna look real quick at my Bluetooth. Let's see what I have. It does say tracker down here. So I wonder if I click on there to say pairing, see what happens. Let's hit done there. We'll go back to the app, hit the plus again. Just a little tip to save you some headache and maybe heartache. Make sure you have your device location on. Of course, your Bluetooth has to be on because I tried this for about 10 minutes refreshing on installing the app, reinstalling the app, turning the, the wallet on and off and nothing. But as soon as I turned on the location, I was able to pop up and connect. Now what I want to do is I want to see what does it do when I click find my wallet. That's pretty cool. It beeps and blinks until you find it. A couple other things to point out about the app. You can see here, this is my signal with my Bluetooth connecting between my phone and my wallet. This is the wallet's battery. I do like right here, there's a settings button I can click. And in here I could rename my tracker. I could, I like this setting an alarm if the Bluetooth is disconnected, therefore I'm notified. Let's see what that sounds like. If you're like me, in addition to losing your wallet from time to time, I also lose my phone. So what I like about this wallet is if I have my wallet and I'm within the 30 feet of the Bluetooth, I can hit this Wi-Fi button two times. Ready? It's immediately sent an audible noise to my phone, so now I can go find it. I think the feature of finding my phone or finding my wallet is pretty sweet. I should say you have to be within the 30 feet of the Bluetooth signal. I've been over that, and then my phone will actually have disconnected from the wallet. Or if you're closer than 30 feet, but there's walls in between you or other obstructions, then also will not work. Part of the app actually has a camera, and you can use the Wi-Fi looking button as like a shutter to take a picture. Ready? And there you have it. I am gonna rename this because I don't like Tracker. I have something better in mind. Jeff Reviews for You has a good ring to it. In this video, we've been taking a look at the TAC 
Tracker, a new wallet from Quicklight. So what did I think of it? Well, first things first, a regular occurrence in the Jeff Reviews for You house is, does anyone know where my wallet is? I can't find my wallet. Or I can't find my cell phone anywhere. Can someone call it? I like now that if I have my wallet or if I have my phone, I can find one or the other. That's pretty sweet. I think all the different options on the Tack Tracker are pretty sweet. I like the screwdriver, the bottle opener, all those different things are really neat and functional to have right on your wallet. I will say, although I like the Bluetooth function where I can find my phone or my phone can find my wallet, I wish that it had a longer range. Now I know that's with the limitation of Bluetooth in and of itself, but sometimes if I'm more than 30 feet away, I still will lose my thing. So that's one thing I wish that maybe they could use a different signal or whatnot just to find the wallet or the phone. That to me would be an awesome upgrade. In the end, I think it's a pretty cool wallet with a lot of neat features. If this is something that interests you, I will leave a link down in the description. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. As always, thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. I've been using this wallet for a couple weeks and here are some of my observations. This part right here, which is the rubber plug that goes into the micro USB slot, I can never get it to go back in the way it was when I originally had it. Every time I push it in, I still have this little piece that pops up and then any movement it just pops it right out. Also, plugging in the included USB or micro USB device is sometimes impossible. Like I get it lined up there and I just can't get it to go in. And so I have to finagle and wiggle. And that worries me over time about this thing just breaking. Um, but I would have liked to have seen like a USB-C that's more common now and definitely easier to plug in. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review of the TAC tracker. You know what? Not that long ago, I actually reviewed another minimalist wallet. It's actually the smallest and lightest minimalist wallet I've ever seen. And it's by a company called Gear Infusion. And this is their Pulse X1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link that review right up here. And I would love it if you would click on this link. And when you do, by the magic of the internet, I'm going to join you at this review. So go ahead, click it. It's safe. I promise.